Today's sponsor is Squarespace, an all-in-one platform from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Hello Sims, welcome to this tutorial. If you clicked on this video, you are most probably lazy and trash and you want the easy way out. Well, good news, I am also trash and lazy. I didn't spend 5 hours a day learning anatomy, drawing all those circles and naked bodies with their exposed peepees. No, I didn't do any of that. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you the work smart, not hard method. So let's say you want to learn how to draw the upper body. The first thing you're gonna do is to grab a picture like this and trace it. No, we are not going to trace it as it is. That is what noobs do. Do you want to be a noob? No, I don't think so. So look at what I'm doing here. For the head, I drew an oval, very simple. The neck is a cylinder. Then the body, look at that body. Did I trace it as is? No. Did I immediately draw the boobas? Also, no. I am breaking it down into shapes. The circles that you see are basically where the limbs go. So this is how I break down torsos, okay? I divide it into three parts. The chest, the middle, and the underpants. The line that I'm drawing here, that's supposed to be the middle of the body. Basically, I'm imagining it as a 3D object. That's how it goes. See? Big brain. You don't have to guess the way the body works anymore, thanks to me. Thing is, you don't want to just draw a bunch of random poses and expect to improve magically. You break them down into shapes so you could understand how it works. So once you got this beautiful traced object, you're not gonna draw over it, okay? You're gonna get cancelled on Twitter if you do that. The reason why we traced it is that we just wanna exercise our muscles and train our hands. This trace drawing, this is what we're gonna copy from. It's easier to draw it this way because it's already broken down into shapes. So I'm gonna start once again with the chest. No boobas yet, just box shape. So I'm basically just gonna repeat the same steps and try my my best to copy it. And once you got this whole thing going on, you can basically put on the clothes. It would be weird if your drawing didn't have any clothes, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna continue the legs and I'm gonna add some shorts. And I'm gonna add some wrinkles there. Then I'm going to add the t-shirt. Bonus tip, if you're drawing clothes, don't just slap it on the body. That's not realistic. It depends on the fabric, but you don't want it hugging body parts. That's just unrealistic, okay? If it's like a t-shirt and it's loose, it's not going to cling on to the lower part. It's just going to droop down, okay? And it's gonna create a bunch of creases like this. And then BAM! You just created something new out of this pose reference. Something smegsy. Okay, okay, wait. Before we proceed, let me tell you about my website. Look at this beautiful thing. This is from my Squarespace website. Now, most of you guys watching me are artists and you want to look pro in front of your clients. See, you can connect your Instagram to your website, so all your posts are automatically there. So it's basically like a portfolio, but if you really want to be professional, you can make a portfolio yourself. Super easy. I showed my beautiful sample portfolio in my last video. And lastly, you want to sell prints? Well, Squarespace has got you covered because they provide print-on-demand extensions. So, if you want to check Squarespace out, head on over to squarespace.com slash coolin to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code coolin. Okay, so anyway, let's try this method on a face. Don't just wing it, okay? First, we need a reference. Now, I don't want you to grab a photo of a random e-girl with blue filters, okay? That's what we call a bad reference. The key here is to find good references. Open a Pinterest, literally just type portrait, and then boom! The difference between a good reference and a bad reference is not the face, okay? I mean, look at them, they both look hot, come on. But look at the portrait. You can easily see the shadows. Lots of good bone structure, smegsy bones. Anyway, when I'm drawing faces, I always start with a circle. If you can't draw a circle, please leave. So everybody knows that drawing a circle comes first, but what you didn't know is that the
the bottom of the nose should be touching the circle. At least that's how I like to do it. I mean, I'm not the law or anything. Okay, so I'm just gonna trace the jaw like this. So at the bottom of the nose, we're gonna draw a cross. Okay, moving on. The eyes are one eye apart. And then like one fourth of the eyes is where the lips end. So we're gonna do that exact same method to draw our portrait. As you can see, it looks like the Colossal Titan right now. But as I always say, trust the process. So the key here is to draw a bunch of sketchy lines. Draw the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Draw them first, okay? Don't draw the shadows yet. So anyway, I'm not gonna make the hair detailed because I hate drawing hair. Anyway, so now we got this sketch, which doesn't look like the reference at all, to be honest. It kind of sucks, but that's okay. Knowing that you suck is the first step to improving. Okay, so here's what I want you to know about faces. You don't have to study like like anatomy or like the muscles in depth, all right? We're not doctors. Doctors are smart, we are not. Thing is, we're gonna focus more on the visual aspect, the planes of the face. You can study this baby right here. It's been used by a lot of artists. See, look at the shadows and different lightings and stuff. You can easily divide the shadows into shapes. So once you got the first layer of shadows, we're gonna choose darker shadows. Another bonus tip. The eyes aren't completely white. I made it like this dark-ish color, but don't make it too yellow, okay? Or else it's gonna look like she has a disease. Okay, so as you draw more and more portraits, you're gonna start to see how light and shadows work. Like, look at the highlights. They're at the cheekbone, the nose, the forehead, and the mouth, and most importantly, the juicy lips. You're gonna start to see it. You're gonna start to notice that all the portraits are like that. Anyway, my paint Thing looks like a Claude Monet. Like from afar, it looks eh, okay. But when you zoom in, what the heck are those unblended lines? But that is a real good tip that I think is very underrated. Don't zoom in too much. Always look at the bigger picture. Just fix the details later on when the picture is okay. So at this point, I just keep on fixing the painting, and for some reason, it just keeps getting worse and worse. So I think I'm gonna stop now. Anyway, what was I saying? Ah, yes. Basically, doing this throughout the years has made me improve, okay? Like, obviously, learning the fundamentals are important. Like, yeah, sure, you could spend some time drawing circles over and over again, but you can't improve if that's all you're doing. You gotta put it into practice, and you won't be able to do that if you rely on your imagination. So grab a dang reference, you start breaking down the shapes, and drawing them, because that is is where the improvement is at. Anyway, thank you for making it this far, and thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Watch this video next, and I'll see you there. Stay cool!